Okay, it works. Okay. Uh, so yeah, thank you, Piero. Sorry for the technical uh, problems here. Hopefully, this still works. Um, and thank you for that introduction. Um, it's it's great to be here at the Open Source CubeSat workshop. Um, I'm going to be giving an introduction and some updates on a project we've been working on in collaboration with LibreSpace Foundation called the Library Space Technology Network, or LISTEN for short. And uh, the reason that we want to bring ground stations to public libraries is that we think that this is an excellent way to broaden access to uh, open space technology. And public libraries are a good place for this work to happen um, because they attract a wide variety of people um, from all different age groups and socioeconomic backgrounds. And the basic idea, um, at least for this pilot stage, is that we want each public library in the LISTEN network to build their own SatNogs powered satellite ground station, install it on their library's roof, and get it running and operating with the involvement of their library community, meaning the people that actually come and use the library. And we're still in the pilot stage of this project. Um, and so what we're trying to do in the pilot stage is understand all of the potential pitfalls and limitations, but also opportunities to look for when we expand the network. Um, and one thing that we were really uh, cognizant of when we designed the pilot is that we wanted to pick uh, libraries that we thought represented all kinds of different libraries around the globe, um, because it would have been very easy just to design the pilot um, to choose libraries that are really well-funded and well-staffed that could do this kind of work quite easily and successfully. But um, what we were trying to do was uh, be aware that uh, there are all kinds of different libraries, and so um, we didn't want to pick one that that just couldn't do the project, that maybe just didn't have the available resources to actually successfully complete it, because we know that would be frustrating, but we also just didn't want to give the ground stations to libraries. We know that this would be really easy to, because they already have a huge technical staff and people uh, willing to do this kind of thing. So in an attempt to um, prevent whoops, uh, situations where uh, we didn't think that the, the network could expand to all the different kinds of libraries out across the globe. We came up with a bunch of different criteria for picking the libraries. I won't read them all off here. Um, but uh, we wanted to represent as many different uh, social, cultural, financial, technical, and geographic considerations as we could. And so the geographic part, we knew going into this pilot that we wanted um, one library in the Eastern Hemisphere and one library in the Southern Hemisphere because we felt that those areas are often um, not represented well in projects like these. Um, and so that was one criteria, but then we came up with some others to help guide us in picking libraries because in this pilot, we decided who to reach out to um, it, it, to install the ground stations. And so with that said, I'll just go through quickly here the five libraries that are part of the pilot. The first one is my home library, and so um, while we are connected to both Harvard and the Smithsonian, we are also are a public library and that we're open to the public and, and uh, help members of the public. Um, and we picked this library mostly because we wanted a place where we could test out what we were doing firsthand, and it was the first ground station uh, that we installed on the roof of uh, the Center for Astrophysics. Uh, the second library we identified was also local to us in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and the reason we picked a, another local library is that we wanted to have a place where we could do in-person activities and try them out before bringing them to other pilot participants. And so uh, that idea got a little bit um, sidelined because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, but we, we are still working with Cambridge Public Library, and we think that that will be a good connection to have like a local place to work with youth groups and things in the future. And then uh, the first um, library sort of outside our home base is the um, library in Kisnau, Moldova. And uh, this is our representing our Eastern Hemisphere. And they've been really great to work with. Um, you can see here on the right, they. Uh, 
brought together some kids to start building their ground station and hope to install it uh, soon. And then uh, our Southern Hemisphere Library is the Biblioteca de Santiago in Santiago, Chile. And um, they've been mostly shut down since COVID, but we did, we, we were able to get them at least the listen ground station and confirm that they received it. So that's sort of where we are with them, but we hope uh, by the end of the pilot still to install the ground station there. And then one other um, kind of library we wanted to represent in the pilot is a rural location, meaning uh, a location with not many people around, um, not near a city. And so the location we found for that is a little town in West Texas called Marathon. And uh, it's just a few hundred people and they have a very small library and just one librarian. Um, but she's been great and willing to work with us to um, try out this pilot. And uh, so they were the second library to completely install their ground station and get it working. And um, it's we've had some difficulties with network that, networking that continue. Um, they, they've replaced their router and uh, we're hoping to get it back online soon. Um, I'm not sure if that's uh, due to the rural location aspect of it or not, but uh, all of this kinds of information about, you know, what could go wrong with the Listen project is what we're looking to, the kind of information we're looking to get in this pilot because we want to know of all potential pitfalls before we could expand the network. Um, I'll move on. And so uh, after we picked our pilot locations, the next step in making this project work was developing a listen kit. And Freddie mentioned this um, at the SATNOG State of the Union yesterday, um, because it's thanks to Librispace and SATNOGs that we were able to put together this really easy to build um, UHF station. And um, so, uh, Librispace tested out a prototype build in Greece, and then we bought the same parts and tried building it ourselves. We modified just a couple parts, and now this is the listen kit of 11 uh, parts. It's easy to put together, no soldering. You can just put it together with a screwdriver and, and install it, and you have a really um, you know, capable UHF station. Um, and so, one thing we knew going into this project was that we wanted to make this really easy to follow for people that have no technical background. So this is an example from our website where we try to explain um, what every component of the ground station does. Um, and then we also are, have come up with very detailed documentation. Um, we've, we think that a lot of people who come to open source CubeSats and ground stations probably already have some of this technical background, um, but we knew that the library communities might not have the technical background, but might be interested to learn. And so we wanted to come up with documentation that was uh, very detailed and easy to follow for novices. And so um, the, the main source of this documentation we're compiling into a Creative Commons licensed work called the Listen Handbook. It's available for free online, um, but for pilot participants, we also printed it out and made it a physical handbook that they can have while they're working on things. And uh, the first step in, in that handbook was to make very detailed build instructions. And so in developing these build instructions, we include lots and lots of pictures. Um, one of the reasons for that, um, other than it just makes it easier for anyone, is that we um, are targeting non-English speakers too. So we have the location in Moldova and one in Chile. And so the native languages in those places are Romanian and Spanish. Um, and so we wanted to have the pictures so that maybe they could follow those without even um, you know, understanding the English fully, but we're also working to translate the English into Spanish and Romanian to make this even more accessible. And uh, beyond the handbook, we're also developing other educational activities. Our first idea uh, for the pilot was that we wanted to do in-person activities, and the first one we wanted to develop was an in-person build activity. So the idea was that you would have all of the parts that we send to you and then the library community would come together uh, to build the ground station. And it looks like Moldova actually was able to do that during COVID, but most of our other libraries, um, because of 
the libraries being shut down or social distancing rules have not been able to do an in-person build activity. So we have shifted our goals a little bit with the educational side of this and have been focusing on online activities. And one of the first ones we developed is this satellite communication activity. And the idea here was it would introduce um, people who, who come to this to satellite communication. Um, we, there's a hands-on component to it too. There's a video, but then there's a hands-on component where we've slowed down the audio from uh, VZLU Sat 1, which is a Czech satellite, and so that participants can actually hear the Morse code in the continuous wave and, and learn um, sort of what that sounds like and learn how to decode Morse code by hand. Um, and we have ideas for other online activities, and we've started developing some of those, inc including a, a very intro presentation to the whole project. But we're also soliciting new ideas. And so these are ideas that uh, should be fun for novices that could just um, complete these activities with just the listen kit, which is, again, a, a UHF station. Um, and so if you have any kinds of ideas for listen activities, I'll, I can put the link in the chat um, in a moment. And it's uh, just at lstn wolba.ch slash resources. There's a link to this activity form, uh, submission form. And it's, it just has very basic information, but um, we found that there are people outside of our, you know, our, our working group that, that have really good ideas for educational activities. And as we expand this beyond the pilot, we're really hoping to develop a curriculum around uh, working with a ground station, but also understanding about uh, small satellite missions and open space technology. And so to wrap up uh, with LISTEN, what we're hoping to do is to get public libraries around the world involved with real space technology by lowering the cost, but also the technical hurdles of owning and operating a satellite ground station. And with that, I'll open it up to questions. Thank you. Excellent, right on time. Thank you. Thank you, Nico. Um, maybe, Arthur, um, can we get, um, or we, you, you could keep Nico up your slides. Uh, oh, okay, sure. Uh, for that, while we go to some questions that we have. This one um, was already, uh, I think you already answered that one. Um, about uh, uh, Juan Luis is asking Juan, uh, to get in touch with, uh, if you can get in touch with the uh, Chile library. He's asking oh, for yeah. a friend. Maybe it's that one or? Sure, yeah, I could I could, I could do that. Um, let me see. Um, yeah, if he wants to just reach out to me through the private chat, I can I can um, hook him up. Excellent. Um, and there is a related question around which you already kind of answered uh, regarding the other languages and uh, if uh, you're open to translations uh, for the handbook. Yeah, I think um, we're looking at the funding. Spanish is definitely our highest priority because it's it's a language that's spoken in a lot of countries. Um, but we're, we're definitely open to translations. Um, yeah. Okay, um, then another question uh, would be, what have been your biggest challenges so far? So I think uh, on the technical side, we haven't had any issues with uh, building the ground stations, which we didn't really expect would be a big issue, but the, the biggest one has been networking, because it's hard to plan without knowing, because all the different libraries in our network have different networking setups. And so it's hard to write really detailed instructions about how to set up uh, the Raspberry Pi on anyone's individual uh, internet network. And uh, another question would be about the next steps after the pilot. Yeah, so we're hoping um, to both expand the network beyond five libraries, of course, but also to develop a curriculum. So right now, our these educational activities that I've been describing have been sort of just like one-offs, but we're hoping to actually develop something that would follow pedagogy and be like, 
you could start with the basics of learning about satellites and then build on your knowledge uh, to learn more and more about it to eventually get to the point where you could get involved with open source projects. And while you are on getting involved, uh, what would be the best way for someone to get involved in your project? Um, you can go to the website, which is lstn.wolba.ch, uh, and there's contacts there, um, but also that activity form that I mentioned. Um, yeah, and so that, that's probably the best way is just to uh, contact me, and I can put you in touch with everyone else. Excellent. Thank you, Nico. Um, I don't think that we have any, any other questions, at least on the channels that I see here. Um, oh, yeah, there's a, um, another question uh, from Samuel. Um, did you face any legal hurdles in the project about the ground station listening to the broadcasts, and what, what's the legal aspect to it? Um, yeah, so um, that was something that we uh, initially, we had been working with some governments in, or not, I shouldn't say governments, it's skipping ahead. We started working with some libraries in Africa um, and found that they often needed approvals from their like federal ministries of culture um, to go forward with this kind of project. And it presented an, a thing where there was, seemed to be so much um, red tape that it was, it would, eat up all of our pilot time before we could start working with them. So that was one of the legal challenges. Um, we also um, have had questions about, is this, can we do this legally in our country? And sometimes the answers to those questions have been unclear because we just don't, we don't know enough, we don't speak the language. And so uh, we haven't, we have had some legal issues mostly just not knowing. And so one of the things in the next stage of LISTEN is we want to hire a legal consultant. OK, um, cool. And I think that, that would be all in terms of questions. Thanks again, Nico and team uh, for the project and the presentation.